Hello, for today's video lecture, we're going to be talking about the equivalent point load. So the equivalent point load is a single point force that is statically equivalent to some original distributed force. So here, uh, we've got an example of a distributed force, and that uh, solid red arrow right here and right here is the equivalent point load. So it would cause the same acceleration, an angular acceleration, uh, if the body were free, uh, and it would cause the same reaction forces if we are constraining the body in some way. So both the distributed force and this point force are going to cause the same accelerations or the same reaction forces, depending on our situation. So why use the equivalent point load? So distributed forces are difficult to deal with directly in equilibrium equations. Uh, so we would have integrals in our force equations and integrals in our moment equations, uh, and we would have that plus all the complexity of our regular equilibrium equation analysis. So because of this, we usually convert the distributed force into its equivalent point load before proceeding with static or dynamic analysis later on. So before we create our equilibrium equations or our equations of motion, we want to convert these uh, distributed forces into point loads. All right, so finding the equivalent point load. For any point force, we must define the magnitude, the direction, and the point of application of that force. Uh, so for now, we're only going to deal with distributed forces with a uniform direction, so the direction will just be maintained. Um, so the direction of the distributed force is going to be the direction of the uh, equivalent point load. What we do need to define uh, that can change from problem to problem is the magnitude and the point of application of our equivalent point load. So to determine those two things, the magnitude and point of application, uh, we have two options. We can calculate this via integration, or we can calculate this via the method of composite parts. So we're going to start with a discussion of integration and then move on to a calculate, the calculation via composite parts. So as a lead in to the integration method, uh, where we're going to imagine looking at a cantilever beam with a few forces acting on the beam. So here we've got some beam. We've got three different forces acting on the beam. Uh, if we, how about we find the magnitude and location of a single force that is statically equivalent to the original set of forces? So we want one force that will replace these three forces. Well, for FEQ, the magnitude, uh, we'd simply need to add up the forces. So 60 plus 30 plus 50. We need to have the same overall net force in the y direction to cause the same reactions. For the location, x eq, so how far do we put this out? Well, we need the same moment to be applied. Uh, so f eq times x eq, force times distance, or the moment due to my equivalent point load, must be equal to the sum of the moments from all the parts. So 60 times 5 plus 30 times 7 plus 50 times 10. Uh, that is the force times distance for each of my original loads. And that must balance out with the one force, or the moment due to the one force, uh, FEQ. Something similar to this is going to serve as the basis for the integration method of finding the equivalent point load. All right, so finding it via integration. So if we imagine a distributed force as an infinite number of very small forces, uh, then we can use a similar method. So rather than summing all of these forces as we did before uh, to find the magnitude of the equivalent point load, we are going to take the integral to find the area under the force function. So FEQ is going to be the integral from some x min to x max, uh, x min being you know, the lowest value of x, x max being the maximum value of x, uh, of our f of x function. So f of x is our force function. Uh, and this is an important first step in doing any sort of analysis for the equivalent point load. We need to define f of x. Uh, and in a 1D problem like this, the force function uh, will give you the magnitude of the distributed force uh, in units of force per given length at any value of x. It is the equation of this particular line uh, for the distributed force. All right, so next... Uh, once we have our force function, if we integrate that, we would wind up with heavy Q. Next, we want to find XEQ, the location of our equivalent point load. Uh, 
Um, so to determine the uh, point of application, uh, we need to know the moment exerted by the original distributed force must be equal to the moment exerted by the equivalent point load. So XEQ is adjusted to balance the moment uh, in this case. So to, to find the moment exerted by the distributed force, we're going to use something called the moment integral. Uh, so we're going to be integrating force times distance. Uh, and so f of x is our force, and then x, so say we're taking the moment about this point over here, uh, my current value of x is currently going to, is going to be my distance from the place I'm taking the moment about. So f of x times x, so take whatever my force function is, the equation for that, multiply another x in there, and I'm going to take the integral from x min to x max, so leftmost point to rightmost point. So that moment integral must be equal to my FEQ, the magnitude of my equivalent point load, which I just found uh, in the previous step, times XEQ. And XEQ is what I'm going to be solving for in this case. All right, so if I rearrange all of this, XEQ is going to be the moment integral, so F of X times X, and I take the integral from X min to X max, and I'm going to simply divide that by FEQ, the magnitude of my equivalent point low, which I found in the previous step, and that gives me my location, XEQ. All right, so that is a single continuous force function in one dimension. Uh, there are other things that can kind of complicate this uh, that we're going to go over in pieces now. So first up is we're still going to stick to one dimension, but we're going to have a discontinuous force function. So if we can't have one F of X uh, that is a single continuous function, uh, we need to break it up into parts. So we'll split the function into sections, integrate each section separately in its given range, and add together the results. So here is a discontinu discontinuous function. So we've got a constant uh, for the first couple meters, and then it kind of goes down linearly from there. So I'd have f of f1 of x uh, from x1 to x2, and then I have f2 of x, so a different force function from x2 out to x3. So feq, I'd simply have the two separate integrals. So integrating from x1 to x2, I integrate f1 of x dx, and from x2 to x3, I'm going to integrate f2 of x dx. Once I do those two separate integrals, add them together, the sum of those two is my feq function. All right, so to find the location, so XEQ of this whole thing, we're going to do a similar procedure with the moment integrals. So XEQ is going to be uh, the integral from x1 to x2 of f1 of x times x, plus the integral from x2 to x3 of f2 of x times x. So the moment integral uh, for the first force function, the second force function. So sum those two things up, those two integrals, divide by FEQ, and that'll give me the location, the overall location of my uh, equivalent point load. All right, so that's all we have for dis discontinuous force functions. Now we're going to move on to 2D surface forces. So if we look at a force spread out over two dimensions, so both X and Y, uh, again, the first step is to define the force function. So this will be a function describing the pressure at a given x and y coordinate. So over here is a, uh, a visualization of this. And so I might have a pressure that varies with both x and y. So the force or the pressure in any given location is 5 times x plus 10 times y newtons per meter squared. So you need to start with defining your force function. Uh, but in this case, the complicating factor is that you might have both x and y uh, in this situation. All right, so the volume under this force function, so this is a kind of a 2D surface, uh, is going to be the integral. Uh, and we're going to need to integrate the force function over the area uh, it's applied to in order to find the volume. So we're taking the uh, integral, uh, integrating over the entire volume of f of x comma y. So it's the force function in terms of x and y. So finding this volume uh, via integration can get kind of difficult. Uh, 
Uh, often we're going to use the method of composite parts, which we'll talk about here in a second instead. All right, so to find the point of application, uh, we're going to uh, have two coordinates. So we need an X and a Y location uh, for my uh, equivalent point load. And we multiply the force function, so the same force function I had before, by either X or Y. So for X EQ, we do X min to X max, F of X, comma Y, times X over F EQ. For Y EQ, or the Y position of the uh, equivalent point load, I'm going to integrate from Y min to Y max. I'm also going to multiply my force function by Y instead of X. So these would be the equations you would use to calculate the uh, equivalent point load position, both X and Y coordinates. Going on to the body problems, uh, going one step further. So now I'm integrating over the entire volume uh, of my uh, the force functions applied across. Uh, and it's going to have the force in terms of x, y, and z coordinates. So this can get quite complicated in this case. Um, and we're finding all three coordinates uh, for the point of application uh, of the equivalent point load. So x eq would be from x min to x max. I'd multiply by x. For y eq, it'd go from y min to y max. I'd multiply by y. Uh, and ZEQ, same thing, Z min to Z max, multiplied by Z. So I have three separate coordinates for the location of my equivalent point load. All right, so moving on, that was all the methods via integration. So next up, we have the composite parts. And so I'm going to go through this kind of quickly uh, because most of Appendix 2 has a lot more information on finding composite parts. So as an alternative to using integrals, we can also use the method of composite parts talked about in Appendix 2, to find the magnitude and position of the equivalent point load. Uh, this solution is going to be geometry-based rather than calculus-based, so it's often going to be easier uh, for anything beyond a very simple uh, integral. All right, so as we stated before, the magnitude of the equivalent point load is the area under the force function. So rather than doing integration, if you want to use geometry to find the area under the force function, so this uh, kind of shaded red area here. The height is going to be in terms of like newtons per meter. The width would be in meters. So this area is actually a unit that would be force, so FEQ. Uh, the position can be determined by knowing that the equivalent point load will always travel through the centroid of the shape under the for force function. So again, in appendix uh, section 2.2 and 2.3, you've got more information on finding the centroid. So if you can find the centroid of this shape, uh, in this case that black dot, your equivalent point load is always going to travel through the centroid. So we can use a similar approach for surface forces. Uh, it's simply going to be the magnitude will be equal to the volume under the force function, and the equivalent point load will travel through the center of volume or centroid of this volume uh, same as center of mass for a uniform density object uh, in this case. So that's all we have for today's video lecture. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you again.